Let's focus on life. <clears throat> I've titled this message, uh, Encouragement for Tired Christians. And I, I don't know if it, it's a big letdown for you if I just tell you that I showed up this morning, hopefully to encourage you, us, together, to keep going, to, to not stop, just, just keep going. And so I'd like to uh, focus on <clears throat> hopefully encouraging us to keep going in the first part and then maybe think about some ways that we become encouragers and how that, that uh, when, we, when we are Christians, when we are where God wants us to be, it cannot just stay with us. It, it, there, if, we, if it just stays with us, then I think it's fair to question whether or not, we really are in the kingdom. So for a scripture reading, I, where do you go? I am, perhaps you think that's where, what he always says, I don't know, but uh, I'd like to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, <coughs> uh, verse 11, and the verse 11 is up there in the NIV, I think. <coughs> I'm going to be reading it in, sorry, I have something in my throat here. Reading it in the King James Version, uh, it doesn't quite have the word encouragement in it in the King James Version. But first, just a little bit of background. I, when I read, break into, I always, when I study, I always think it's important to read in context. So read ahead of that, read after it, and well, after it would be another uh, the, the second letter of, of Thessalonians to the Thessalonians. But I, in context, Paul is talking to them about um, the destruction and the things that are coming and, and uh, what they need to do, watch and be sober and be not drunken and on and on and on. And then he comes to down to verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And I like that because... He says, as you are doing. And I want us to, not, this morning, I'm not, I didn't come to chide someone or say that we're utterly useless, we're not, but I, I also think that we off, often, or I can put it that way, can get in a groove where I kind of get on autopilot and I think, well, you know, things are, and I can grow is what I'm trying to say, and I think all of us can do that. I think that's something that is maybe the devil's trap to keep us from growing. Now I'm going to skip down. Verse 11 is what I want to focus on uh, this morning, that we encourage, be encouragers. But I'd like to skip down then or go down to about verse um, 14. I know there's a couple verses in there that talk about uh, the, the leaders. I'm not going to focus on that. Um, <clears throat> But then, and I just want to say before I read that they use words like exhort or uh, support or, you know, they're, they're different Old English words that could fit into uh, encouragement or could, could be interchanged. You can stand if you want just for a change of position. <clears throat> Beginning at uh, verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, <clears throat> both among yourselves and to all men. And then he has a number of what I call one-liner commandments. <clears throat> Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. 
you can be seated if you like. I like that uh, there's a lot that could be talked about here, but I like that last line. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. And there, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this, uh, in, in expounding on this, um, this segment of scripture, but Paul's concern is, is that they among themselves would, would encourage each other, would exhort each other, would, would bolster each other to keep going, don't stop. And I don't know, I, I tried to kind of think things through and, and kind of think, uh, well, what, do, what discourages, you know, what is it that's discouraging to you and to me, what is it that makes us stop? What, what is it that, that keeps us from rejoicing and, and uh, going forward in our uh, Christian walk, walking with joy? And there are many things. We are in this world. We are, and I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not probably going to mention what you face. I'm probably not going to say something that touches you. But as you sit here in the pew, young and old, we all have things that we just are like, what happened? Why did that happen? Relationships go bad. The car breaks down. Struggling with the same sin over and over, on and on and on. And, and even if nothing else, just constantly hearing tragic news. You know, news is run by people that want to say something that grabs your attention and makes you say, wow, I can't believe that happened. And just keeps going on and on and on. Um, rejection. Uh, by those that, that should love us, that don't show love. And of course, there are tragic events. There's relationships that we're not a part of that go bad, hatred uh, expressed by people that, that uh, you know, are. it's just not, we live in a world where the devil is after us. And, and maybe I'll talk some more about that. But we're here to, to, I'm here to encourage us that all of these things are going to happen. I'm not saying this list that I gave you, I don't even, that wasn't a list. I just, that kind of came out of my head. But all of these things that are not easy, you know, we, 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 the changes of life discourage me sometimes. I just can't run as fast as I used to. I just, and that's minor. I mean, I don't have to run as fast as I used to, but get a golf cart you can do that when you're older but there there are other things that that you 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 just you sometimes and I don't even know why it is that I'm talking about my own personal life it seems like you're top of the ridge things are seemingly going well for no reason I can explain suddenly I become discouraged there are just a little bit of sand in my shoes and there's something that someone said or mentioned and I think oh yeah that okay or I forgot to pay that bill, or I, you know, and, and so discouragement sets in, and if we don't push back on that discouragement, we can get to the place where we can no longer overcome. And I want to read to you the verse in, in John 16. It's a verse that we all know, but I want you to take this with you as you face discouragement, because I think it's Jesus' own words. In the, in, in the world, he says, Ye shall, it's almost like a promise, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Then he says, I have overcome the world. And I want to go a step further. I know maybe this is adding to scripture. But if we are a child of his, we have a part in that overcoming strength. We have a part in that. We have things that encourage us when we feel like we have no courage to go on. I, uh, I, just a statement, discouragement doesn't come from God. Now, I'm not going to, we could get in a huge discussion about does God allow things to happen to see what we're going to make of them, or is it always from the devil? And I'm not, th that's not, I'm not prepared to, to, to talk about that, but I do know there is scientific evidence that our our natures, are, we're hardwired to, to, uh, to criticize rather than encourage, to see the negative rather than the positive. 
And it really does take the Holy Spirit and it does take God in our hearts to, to get us to the place where when things don't go well, to see the bright side of it, to see the positive things that can come out of it. And God is never unable, even when I feel unable to overcome. Uh, I'd like to make mention of some things. You know, sometimes I, I perceive things as failure, and I think, why, where's God in all this? I don't know if you've ever gotten to this place where there's a tragic event or there's depression or there's something that's been eating away at you or, or someone, and you think, where is God in all this? What, why isn't he just here, and why aren't we just positive and, and encouraging others? But I, I want to just remember, just again, that God has a plan and a purpose for his people. It doesn't matter what. I was in a conversation yesterday for too long, probably, with a customer, and they, they said that we were just, they're talking about, I'll say some more maybe, but they, they were talking about the age we're in and their church-going people, and I said, remember, the best is yet to come. Keep that in mind, because even, even if our health goes bad, even if things go off the rails, if we can only stay faithful, God is at the other end of the road. Death is a door that we pass through, and I know all of you know that, but sometimes I need to hear it. That is not the end. That is the beginning, if we stay faithful. And that is what I want to encourage us to do this morning. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Sometimes I think, well, if, if only I had words to speak. I go to viewings, sometimes I go to, you know, and I think, what am I going to say? How, just being an example, just showing up, just showing people that you care. This, this is a verse, 1 Timothy 4.12, Richard mentioned it Wednesday evening, talking about uh, Paul writing to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. So he's talking to youth, but he's talking to all of us, I think. But I, this is what I underline but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And that is encouraging. That encourages others. That example that we live encourages others. Sometimes you have to say very little, but it makes a huge difference. And I don't know how you feel this morning sitting here. Maybe you're on top of the mountain. I hope you are, and I hope you're ready to go through this week encouraging others that are in need and noticing who needs encouragement. But some of the, the dark moments that I've had, let's say the Tuesdays in my life, when things didn't work out and I wondered where God was, and some of the things that happened as far as encouraging me were not some great theological long text or just simply someone saying, just don't give up. Just keep going. You have something that is worth hanging on to. Stay faithful. And that's what I want to do this morning. It's so basic, so simple. Stay with it. Don't give up. Don't, don't, don't move to the left or right. And I've been encouraged multiple times in, in many different ways. And I, I just, I, I'm just going to go down the list because I, I think it's so, it's so normal. We, things happen in such everyday fashion that sometimes we think, well, we're, I went through this week, I didn't encourage one person. But these are observations, and I, I recognize I kind of live in a bubble where I, I see hundreds, sometimes a thousand people a week, it seems like. And, and I, I notice at least a few things that happen. And, and a lot of these folks don't have any idea what they're doing. They don't say anything. They just come, and they're there. Now sometimes I have conversations. But what encourage, encourages me, and this is, I'm not naming names, but there was, a, there was a family in our shop, and just the love that they had for each other and the delight that they had being together, the conversation they had encouraged me. That family is important. And that it matters how we interact as a family. And they were talking about the, the things that they wanted to do. And it was just simple. Getting together, doing crafts together. But they were family. They had teenagers and beyond. Mom and dad were about my age. 
There was a young couple this week that I talked to that I was, they were from another church group, but that doesn't matter. They were Christians. They were, they were deeply concerned about their four children, nine and under. And it just encouraged me that, that we need to, to prop each other up and stabilize and, and encourage each other. Keep going. You can do it. The mother just made the mention, she said, you know, this and that happened in, in their extended family, and I'm not sure if we can do it. And I said, yes, it's possible. Just keep going. That encouraged me. I was encouraged by a couple in their 70s that had been together for 40 years, but they acted like they were dating. They loved being together. They were kind to each other. They, they spoke well of each other. And, and I, I know this couple, they've been in our shop a number of times. And it inspires me every time. They don't tell me that I need to do that in my marriage. They don't tell me anything. They just do their thing. And they're an example to me. Last but not least, my family knows who I'm talking about. Older man, comes to our shop quite a bit. And he is such a happy guy. He loves his wife. He came and gave her a basket for her 50th anniversary. And I remember this happened over a year ago. I'll never forget. He was just such a super positive, encouraging, just keep going type of guy. And he, we just laughed. But as he walked out the door, this was at the end of July, he said, have a happy August. And we thought, oh. <laughs> but you know what? Every time he comes, he encourages me not because he gets after me and tells me, you know, half a dozen things I've missed the mark on, but just because he's still friendly, he's still happy, he's still going forward, and he could be long-faced. At a very early age, he lost his dad, and he, he could just be sorry for himself, but he's not, and that, that challenges me. Hebrews 3.13, we could go verse after verse, and I, I'm just, this is going to be a really, I just want to get really to the point here. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. And I think in the King James, that's the NIV, I think in the King James that says, exhort each other daily, it uses the word exhort instead of encourage but this is what struck me that gripped me, and this is the reason I'm quoting this verse this morning, is because sometimes I walk out of a place and I think, oh, I had this opportunity to tell them, what you're doing is good. Just keep on doing it. And I just missed that opportunity. But this verse says, as encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. Isn't that just so the devil's way? just to get me to think that, well, I'll say it next time, or I, I'm just going to be quiet, I'm a bit reserved, and I could have had that opportunity. Well, don't beat yourself up. Be encouraged. There's, it is today. When encouragement is absent from the life of a church, people will feel unloved, unimportant, useless, forgotten, uh, I think every prayer meeting ought to have at least a segment where we pray for each other and we focus on encouraging each other and, and listening to each other. We need more Barnabases in, uh, in our day. He was in Acts 4.36, he was the son of encouragement. I don't think that's quite the way the King James says it. So what am I saying? Trying to sum this up this morning. You know, as a, a pastor, you, st you hear this over and over and over. We're in a fight. We're against the world. We, are, we have to keep fighting. We have, to, we have to, to stand up. And finally, I kind of get this feeling that, and, and I've observed this, that with that type of continually, we are in a fight. We've got to keep fighting. People use sharp words with each other. They, they kind of get after each other, and they think this is their fight to fight. But what am I saying this morning when I say we're in a fight? I'm in trying to encourage us to keep reading our Bible, to keep praying, to lean in harder, to be more gentle, to be more kind. Don't be sharper with your words. Be kinder with your words. Our battle is not fought 
with sharp words and swords and staves. Sometimes those staves come out of the mouth of those that are supposed to be followers, that are supposed to be encouraging. Let's not do that. Let's be encouragers. We are in a battle, but our battle is not fought with anger or animosity or trying to have the last word or trying to, to, to say it in such a way that, that we're you know, overwhelming and crushing. Let God do that. Let's just encourage. Be the fixer of broken relationships. Keep looking for ways to listen creatively and then respond to those things. That is our battle. Our fight, again, I want to say this, and I want to be very clear, our fight is not to fight. Our fight is fought differently. Our fight is to stay calm and encouraging no matter where we're at in life. That is our call, our call to action. Now, I'd like to just move on a little bit. Who's qualified to encourage and how do we encourage? And I, <laughs> if every one of you had a chance to speak, you would all say something that would be very valid and valuable. And it would be something that someone has done for you that has encouraged you to keep going. And then you focus on that. And we have different gifts. So who's qualified? I'm going to say this. If you're a Christian, you're qualified to encourage other Christians. You don't need a pulpit. You don't need a special ordaining. You just really need to feel the hand of God on your shoulders and say, I have something to offer to the world. Some kind of, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but some, this is a give and take. Sometimes I need encouragement, and sometimes I need to be willing to give encouragement. But anyway, I, I, I'm going to say, who is qualified in the kingdom of God? All those who are attached to the vine and have life-giving salvation flowing through them are qualified to encourage but i noticed some things that that happened and i i let me just mention this briefly jesus came and what did he do he went to the beggars he went to those that had diseases he went to the down and outers of their the society that he was in the scribes and pharisees were unable to encourage or it seemed like it and they were almost jealous of jesus why was that because he had an attitude of humility, and they didn't. And that often cuts us off. We cannot encourage with pride in our hearts. We, we just cannot. And it, it, if they were jealous, they were unable. I remember, and some of you probably remember this, when uh, I, I think it was Phil Beachy that had some years back a topic on home and marriage and he, he had a chart up there. I still have this somewhere on my computer. And at the top of that pyramid, there was, he was talking about marriages and marriages that can give. And, and when you talk about marriages, you're talking about teamwork. It, well, let me just say this. Marriages that sizzle were at the top. And he said, those are the marriages that can actually give. This morning, I'm not necessarily focusing on marriage but I, I would just say this Christians that have a a good connection with God I'm going to say a connection that sizzles they're able to encourage others then they have something to give and I'm, I'm I don't want to discourage anyone by saying that because sometimes I beat myself up and I think why didn't I connect why didn't I encourage well let God and the Holy Spirit guide that It has been said, I, psychiatrists have said that, and we know that the military, courage, if we have enough courage, we can encourage. By constantly moving out of our comfort zone, we train ourselves to, to it strengthens our hand in sizing up situations and being there to encourage. But I want to say something else along with that. Connect your mission, your purpose with your encouragement. And I'm saying this because I look at this, even this small crowd this morning, and a lot of you have had different experiences than I did. You've been different places than I have been. You've, you've experienced, you have a different background. That does, that, that's beside the point. 
the family of God should come from diverse backgrounds. It should. And, and so, but I'm, I'm saying this, connect your, the reason you encourage with your purpose in life and, and maybe make it a mission. And, and what I'm saying by that is often people that have encouraged me in certain areas, certain junctures, sometimes critical areas, they have a story to say. And I'm, I'm trying to flip this around. What God mean, what God, what the devil means for evil, God means for good. And sometimes those stories that have, that they have, they now are using to encourage me and other people. If you've lost a loved one, you have some some experience. I've lost people. Yes, I have, but I I haven't lost a mom and dad yet. I haven't lost a sibling yet. And sometimes, uh, let me just. Move on. There are others that have that have uh, experienced accidents. There are others that have just so many a variety of of experiences, and turn that into a mission to encourage instead of becoming bitter. Use that as your platform to to bless other people and saying, "I know what you're going through. I know how that feels. I remember what happened." But keep you keep going. Even sometimes, I'll just say this, sometimes I'm so blinded by my whatever depression or uh, not depression, I'm not, I don't feel like a depressed person, but just things happen that I can't think quite straight, if you want to call it that. And I need someone to say, yes, this is the way, keep going. And we can, you can be there for that. The best encouragers have a story that may not be the best or the most glossy or glamorous story, but that becomes their strength, and that is how they encourage people. One more thing. Well, one more thing. I shouldn't say it that way. This is what concerns me sometimes in a church setting and otherwise, and I know I've, sh- I've probably said this in different places. Sometimes we see someone that's discouraged in the church with their Christian walk, and I just miss it. I'm just not where I should be, and I, I just I just don't say the words that I should, or I'm not there, and eventually they drop off. And what really bothers me is when they end up in a place where they never dreamed they'd go because maybe someone wasn't there at a crucial point. So it's easy to say, well, I can see why they just went where they did, but it's a lot harder when I think, what did I miss in that experience? It makes me feel so much more responsible, and it's good for me to think, maybe if someone would have been there to help them along at a critical juncture, and sometimes there are people that try to help. And sometimes things are taken in a wrong way. I know that. So I, it's not a once and done statement, but still it bothers me sometimes. I think, was I not there? And I, I, I'd like for all of us to just kind of think that thing through. Again, it's easy to be critical, but let's think about what we could have or can do today. Well, I, I think I'm going to just kind of end with that. I, back to what Tim said in the opening. The devil has his way of doing things. His way is to kill, destroy, to steal, and, and all things that are um, coming from the devil will destroy whatever it touches. But John 10, 10 at the end says, he, Jesus came so that we would have life, and what? that we would have it more abundantly. And so I want us to be encouraged this morning. All of us, maybe, we, we, we might think we're the youngest, the oldest, in the middle. Maybe our family isn't perfect. Maybe our business isn't perfect. Maybe our world, maybe our government, maybe our economy is not perfect. Maybe we think we have nothing else left to offer. But I am certain 
that God has a work for you to do. I, I, I just want to bless each one of you with this idea that God is enabling his people today. That same customer I was talking to yesterday said that in our, in our world, there's a lot of complaining about the next generation, and our young people just don't get it. They just are falling behind. They're getting wrapped up in whatever they're getting wrapped up. There's a lot of criticism, intergenerational, whatever you want to call it. That may be so. But this lady said, if that's the case, wouldn't it just bear itself out that Christianity would say, hey, that is our opportunity to bring encouragement, to carry water for the next generation. I know it's hard to understand sometimes people do this to you or to us, but at that very moment, they need more encouragement than ever before. They, they might, it might feel like they're pushing you back. They don't even want help. I wanted to put that, I don't know if I can explain this picture, but th there's this picture of Jesus and a muddy lamb, and he's chasing it. I wanted to put that picture on the board this morning. But sometimes those that need encouragement are actually pushing against us. But God help us that we have the strength and the courage to keep saying, here, come, I, I want you here. I, Jesus wants you here. Because that is our mission, and that is why God has us where he has us, whether we despise it or don't. God has a purpose for us, and he wants us to be an encourager. It really struck me, it really spoke to me, the hope that we bring to the next generation need not be, this need not be a bad experience. In fact, I would, I would, I would suggest, I, I don't know, maybe... Melvin, you're older than me, but I would suggest there's probably some older folks that looked at my generation and said, they don't get it. They don't understand. They, they just don't get it. And maybe my mom still does that. I don't know. But that's not true. We have a God that has supernatural power, and he has hands and feet and mouths to speak through. And we need not sit discouraged. Be encouraged to continue on this morning. Keep going. If you're not discouraged at all, there's nothing in your life that seems to hold you back, then just know that that's God's call for you to be an encourager. Let's stand and pray. Heavenly Father, we pause this morning before you, knowing that we have a call on our lives to be active in encouraging others. And I pray that you would bless this group, even a small group, Father, that can make a huge difference in a community, in a neighborhood, in a family. Bless us with wisdom to know how we can encourage each other. And as the world gets angrier and, and things seem to go off the rails and we face things that we don't that look uncertain father i pray that you would help all of us to band together and focus on encouraging each other instead of cutting each other down oh god i pray that you would forgive us where we've maybe failed maybe failed someone that was here and and left because of their discouragement or, or whatever it is forgive us for that father help us to learn from our mistakes and be what you want us to be I just pray your blessing upon us. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.